Hi hey everyone, this is a revision presentation looking at the arguments for and against privatization. Now, in this revision video, I'm also going to touch base on what is meant by nationalization and also look at regulation and deregulation. This revision video would be typical of a 25 mark essay question, uh, typically either in section A or section B, um, where you would be asked to look at should a market privatize or should it be kept under government control? Privatization is a means of uh, government, uh, government intervention. So this would come under in terms of you looking at in the specification, it would be looking at things like markets and market failure and government intervention. So governments often try to increase efficiency or competition in markets. Privatization is a form of government intervention. Government intervention designed to increase efficiency and competition in markets. And a phrase that I'm going to frequently use throughout this revision presentation is the phrase opening up to the disciplines of the free market. Economists would believe that the free market disciplines, markets which are not under the direct control of government, operate more efficiently. That increase in competition, they are driven by the profit incentive, and it is the profit incentive that in effect forces or makes these firms operate in ways that are deemed to be more efficient, which could be in the consumer's best interest. The government can use a number of intervention methods to try and achieve this increase in efficiency or competition in these markets. And there are four main methods here. You've got regulation, deregulation, privatization, which is the focus of this revision video, and nationalization. Regulation looks at rules uh, and legislation and policies that basically restrict the actions of firms operating in certain markets. Deregulation, on the other hand, looks at uh, reducing some of those rules and regulations and legislation. Deregulation, we say, reduces the barriers to entry. So high levels of regulation act as a bar to entry. They act as an obstacle which would stop new firms from entering into certain industries. Privatization is the seal of government owned assets. So where the government previously owns an organization, it is owned by the taxpayer. They then sell that to private shareholders. The company then becomes under the complete ownership of a private body of shareholders rather than the government. Nationalization is taking a once privately owned organization and bringing it under state ownership or bringing it under state control and ownership. So nationalized uh, industries, a nationalized industry or public corporation is one that is owned by the state. Examples of that would be things like um, the NHS, for example. Um, they are a publicly owned organization. In the past, public ownership enabled utilities such as gas, electric, for etc., um, to be provided during times of war or crisis. And the government felt at the time that if it was to leave it to the disciplines of the free market, if it was to leave it to private shareholders, then they would basically abuse that trust and they would raise prices and put people who were already in a very difficult position into an even worse position. So the government felt that at best that they would... Uh, take ownership of what they often call the commanding heights of the economy, the strategic industries, industries which were essential, uh, central and essential to the running of an economy. Governments provide a range of public and merit goods, such as national defense and education. If you think about it, like education is a very good example. If we left education solely to the private sector, it would mean that parents who were unable to afford private education could not send their children to school. And therefore, through no fault of the child, they would be denied access to a education of some sort. So the reason why we have state education is that not everybody can afford a private education. And what we don't want is we don't want any qualities in society. Privatization involves the transfer of assets or organizations from state ownership to the private sector. Uh, recent examples would be the Royal Mail, for example. The Royal Mail was once a government owned organization. Uh, and then about eight or nine years ago, um, they were then sold to private shareholders. So Royal Mail now is actually a private company. It was once owned by the state, but is now owned by private shareholders. In the UK, this has involved selling off previously nationalized industries and businesses. Our first advantage of privatization is that we say that firms become more efficient. Now, um, for the students that I teach, you will have seen this diagram many times in lessons. Uh, if I don't teach you, 
or if you're uh, reviewing this at the last minute, um, I would encourage you to have a look at the revision video that looks at the advantages and disadvantages of monopolies, because you will see quite a lot of cross-reference between the arguments for and against privatization that's linked with the arguments for and against uh, an increase in monopoly power in certain industries. So we often say that privatized firms are opened up to the disciplines of the free market. Now, a free market will have the objective of profit maximizing. Uh, they are incentivized by the profit motive. And economists would argue, or some economists would believe, that it is the profit motive that makes these industries more efficient, because the industry is operating uh, to meet the benefits or to meet the objectives of the in individual shareholders. Shareholders will not want inefficiencies. They will want it to operate at the lowest possible cost. Uh, they will want to make as much profit as they possibly can, because that will then help to increase their uh, dividend uh, payments. People would often argue that uh, nationalized industries or industries that were owned by the state, they were inefficient. They had access to the public purse. They had access to public finances. Why should they be inefficient? Um, it wasn't right wasting taxpayers' money on inefficient organizations. We think of, for example, the coal mines. Um, coal was losing its demand. The economy, the market no longer demanded coal. Uh, therefore, it didn't make sense for the government to keep plowing money into industries which were simply still inefficient. In privatized firms, if the market no longer demands the product, the privatized firm is more likely to respond to the disciplines of the free market um, because their objective will be profit. If it's not profitable, we don't do it. How then can consumers benefit from a privatized firm? If they do pursue the objective of profit maximization, they can make those long run supernormal profits. And you can see that by the yellow shaded area on my diagram to the left. This profit can therefore be reinvested back into the company in the form of technological advances, innovation, new products and research and development. So if profit is being made, you can use it to improve the quality of the service that consumers get. Think about your railways, for example. By privatizing some of the railways, it means that some of the trains that we would travel on are a much better quality than what they would have been 10, 20, 30 odd uh, years ago. If you think about the efficiencies of travel, oyster cards, scanning in uh, as opposed to buying tickets, for example, that allows for a much more efficient movement around those train stations. I uh, think particularly if you live in London, um, the number of train stations, particularly at weekends, uh, that are closed because of upgrades, money that is made from those uh, from providing those services is reinvested back into uh, the system. The, the new Elizabeth line, um, which just opened uh, yesterday, uh, for example, um, that would be an example of where money collected from these privatized firms are then reinvested back into the quality of it. We could also add in here as well, not just looking at dynamic efficiency, but also looking at productive efficiency. So increased economies of scale, it leads to reduced costs. Privatized firms will be incentivized to cut costs because by cutting costs, assuming that revenue remains constant, your revenues are the same, but costs are lower. Therefore, that gap, that profit, that super normal profits will be larger. This is beneficial for consumers as they receive a brand new product or better quality product over a period of time. Uh, again, looking at the examples of the railways is a really good example. They may have been able to purchase products that never even existed before. So privatized firms can actually introduce new, bigger ways of doing things. You take, for example, um, being able to track your parcel now through uh, Royal Mail, having the app on your phone. You didn't have that 20 years ago. They may have been able to purchase products that never existed before. They will increase their welfare, their utility, and their satisfaction. Consumers gain possibly better value for money. If technological advances are used to improve the production process, this in turn leads to reduced average costs. These cost savings could be passed on to consumers in the form of lower prices. So again, there's a lot of references here to the benefits of monopolies. We can pull in those links to reduced average costs which therefore can benefit the consumer. Consumers subsequently have greater choice. Privatized firms, by opening up to the disciplines of the free market, you also actively encourage other private firms to operate in the industry as well. So you remove that only one firm being owned by the government, and you basically say, well, whoever wants to enter the industry, if they can come up with the, if they can reach the barriers to entry, um, then they can provide a good service in that industry. 
So having more than one firm in it can subsequently help to increase costs. The benefit of this possibly could lead to positive spillover effects of uh, innovation. A patent or copyright on a product will help maintain possibly monopoly power. Some evaluation points then on this uh, efficiency. There ultimately is, however, no guarantee that this profit will be used for reinvestment and thus dynamic efficiency may not occur. So even though the government would like the idea that the firm does become more uh, dynamic efficient, uh, efficient if they move into private ownership, the government subsequently has less control over what they do. Because when the industry is under the control of government, the government control what happens. If they sell it off to the private sector, right, they gain money from that. They gain a huge boost in revenue, but that's only a one-off boost in revenue. Um, however, they've got less control over those industries. An example I would like to mention here would be the Royal Mail. When Royal Mail did privatize, the government still owned 30% of it. And the idea of that was to make sure that 30% of it was still owned by the state so that the state could still um, have a degree of control to act in the public's interest. Due to the lack of competition, there is no incentive for firms to invest these profits to become dynamically efficient. Instead, profits are likely to go to shareholders in the form of dividends. Um, again, private shareholders will be out to maximize their dividends. In the long run, firms may increase their prices uh, further to justify a better quality good or service. In reality, it is argued that it is irrational for a firm to be dynamically efficient. Um, again, a privatized firm is more likely to want to maximize shareholder returns and dividends rather than benefit um, consumers through improving the quality of it. A second advantage subsequently is that you could argue, now you could do, for example, economies of scale. Uh, and my, what I would say here is go back to the video on advantages and disadvantages of monopoly. Uh, and again, just read that point on uh, economies of scale. But we can say that often privatization of state-owned monopolies occurs alongside deregulation. So governments will choose to privatize, but they will also choose to deregulate as well. So we will sell off the once government-owned asset and we will now deregulate the industry as well. So we will make it easier for firms to operate in it. And subsequently, we will reduce those barriers to entry. We will make it more contestable. We will reduce the, uh, the uh, ability um, or we will reduce the barriers that stop new firms from entering. Policies to allow more firms to enter the industry and increase the competitiveness of the market. It is this increase in competition that can be the greatest spur of improvements in efficiency. For example, there is no more competition, uh, sorry, there is now more competition in telecoms and distribution of gas and uh, electricity. Um, you know, before I remember back in the day, you only had BT. Um, before mobile phones were basically something that everybody had, or most people had, um, only a few people would have had mobile phones, but everybody uh, would have had a landline telephone. Um, and if you were connected to a landline telephone, it was likely that it was BT. Um, gas, it was British gas. Um, now we've got more gas companies, we've got more telecommunications, we've got more electric companies. Um, privatization of those once government-owned industries has now led to an increase in competition. Deregulation reduces those barriers to entry. It increases contestability in the market. Um, it leads to that improvement in um the number of firms in the industry. It reduces those barriers to entry. More competition creates more choice for uh, consumers. So we have a situation in which there is now more competition. Uh, consumers now have more choice in those industries. It possibly could lead to lower prices. So if we go back, speaking on those basic terms, we would say that a higher increase in uh, competition um, leads to more firms in the industry, therefore increasing industry supply, therefore pulling down market prices if we were to look at the supply and demand curve. Very short point of evaluation in here in red, privatization doesn't necessarily increase competition. It very much so depends upon the nature of the industry or the nature of the market. For example, there is no competition in tap water because it is a natural monopoly. It makes sense for there to be only one firm in the industry. So what you have to look at here is, are we privatizing a firm in which it will become under private ownership, but there won't be other firms in it? or it isn't possible for other firms to enter even if it is privatized? Or are we privatizing a firm which is allowing new firms to enter the industry 
because the nature of the industry allows for new firms to enter. Take, for example, the real industry. Um, you very much so have, you still have regional monopolies in the real industry. One of our main disadvantages, um, again, very similar, almost identical to the um, disadvantage of monopoly is that they're allocatively inefficient. Privatized firms set high prices and they restrict output. Remember that their objective is to profit maximize. So they operate, if you look at the diagram to the left, um, if you look here, they operate at QM um, rather than QC. So QM is the output level at which the firm is profit maximizing because it's where MR is equal to MC. QC is where they're operating at the socially optimum level of output or the allocatively efficient level of output. And you can see the blue area by operating at the profit maximizing level of output, they are creating a deadweight loss. Private firms set high prices and they restrict output away from the socially optimum level of output. They are allocatively inefficient. There is less government control. So because there's less government control, privatized firms will pursue the objective of, pri of profit maximization. If they're opened up to the disciplines of the free market, they will pursue private, they will pursue the objective or the profit motive. By setting high prices, they risk exploiting consumers and abusing their newfound monopoly power. The monopolist or the privatized monopolist will set prices where MR equals MC, which is a profit maximizing objective, not where P equals MC, which is the allocatively efficient level of output. At Q2, or in this diagram, QC, resources are not allocated according to consumer demand with consumers getting lower quality than they desire. Supply is not equal to demand. Due to those high prices, consumer choice is restricted. This reduces the consumer surplus in the market. This creates a deadweight loss, a welfare loss for society. This is a misallocation of resources. It is market failure. Now, for this point, you could argue that if privatizing the firm is subsequently leading to allocative inefficiency, it's creating a misallocation of resources. You are causing a situation of government failure because the government made the decision to privatize the industry. By privatizing the industry, that unintended consequence leads to allocative inefficiency. The unintended consequences of that then is government failure because you could actually argue that government actively set about the conditions for the market to fail. Risks of creating inequality those on low incomes are excluded from the market. So it could lead to, again, further government failure by this element of inequality. Uh, evaluation then of allocative inefficiency. In order for the firm to be allocatively efficient, they will have to forgo the objective of profit maximization. That is unlikely in a privatized firm. If they're opened up to the disciplines of the free market, they are likely to be profit maximizers. This may reduce their ability to be more dynamically efficient. There is a conflict of objectives. The firm cannot achieve both, and so more likely to pursue profit maximization to meet the needs of shareholders at the expense of consumers or society. Consumers may see a reduction in uh, quality if prices are subsequently lower. So our final evaluation of privatization. Overall, privatization can open a market up to the disciplines of the free market and make it more efficient. We normally would say that privatization is good. However, there are many things it depends on. But generally, we say the argument, the largest argument for it is that it is more efficient. It depends upon the nature of the industry in question. We think about the strategic, the commanding heights of the economy, the strategic industries. An industry like telecoms is a typical industry where the incentive of profit can help increase efficiency. However, if you apply it to industries like healthcare or public transport, the profit motive is less important. So again, privatization of BT, for example, of uh, electric, gas, now they are utilities. Um, that would be seen, you'd be more inclined to privatize those industries than maybe what you would do in industries such as healthcare, which are there in the public interest. Um, however, there is a risk that they are likely to exploit consumers and abuse their newfound monopoly power. If they pursue the objective of profit maximization, 
they have to forego the objective of allocative efficiency and acting in the consumer's interest. It depends upon the quality of regulation. If you privatize an industry, it must be regulated to make sure that it does operate in the consumer's best interest. Do regulators make the privatized firms meet certain standards or service uh, of service and keep prices low? So the governments might say, well, we will privatize the industry and open it up to private shareholders. But if we do that, we will set in a, a series of regulations to make sure that even though it's privatized, it is not going to risk uh, abusing consumers. Is the market contestable and, uh, and competitive? Creating a private monopoly may harm consumer interests, but if the market is highly competitive, there's greater scope for efficiency savings. So what we're saying here is that it is better to privatize a, a government-owned industry if there is a presence of competition already in the industry or if there are prospects of increasing competition if it does become privatized. The natural monopoly argument so if you take, for example, if it's right for there to be only one firm in the industry, is it right then for that then to be owned by the state? Surely the state should understand that there will be a number of industries which they may, sorry, they must provide in order to be seen to be acting in the public's best interest. Opportunity cost. Is there a conflict of objectives uh, here? What is the opportunity cost of privatization? One of the biggest opportunity cost here is that once you privatize, yes, you get a huge increase in revenue, but it's a one-off lump sum. If you privatize an industry, the government, yes, they could get cooperation tax, but it would be no, the cooperation tax would be no more near the amount of revenue that they would have received if it was under state ownership. Our overall recommendation is that privatized firms need regulating from the government to prevent their exploitation of consumers. Effective regulation using price controls, quality measures, uh, of uh, or forced reinvestment will ensure that the public interest is protected and outcomes are closer uh, to being allocatively efficient. What about public-private partnerships? That would be a really good recommendation to make is that if you're too scared to go total 100% privatization, why not look at methods of going down the route of public-private partnerships where the state works in conjunction with private enterprise to make those markets more efficient? I hope that you have found this revision video useful. Please do go over it again, stop and start, go back to those paragraphs. And like I said, I would look at this in conjunction with the um, revision videos on arguments for and against monopolies. Best of luck in your uh, exams.